Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this installation on the Raspberry Pi series, I'm going to show how to set up Radius. And there are several different ways to do it. This will be simply building the foundation to get the ball rolling. And then in successing videos, you will see other ways you can do it and how it's going to interact with the different devices. Okay, now that we're in front of our Raspberry Pi, before I start out, I do want to mention that this was done using the 925-2013 version of Wheezy Raspbian. Because I've been finding as the different releases come out, and sometimes there's different versions of what I've shown you in the past, the command syntax may change a little bit. We'll get the process started. Uh, I've already gone and done the, the standard thing I always do when setting up a Raspberry Pi of doing the sudo apt-get update. And I already know what the name of the module is, so at this point we'll just get that process started. sudo uh, space apt-get install free radius. And it's going to take just a little bit to get all this downloaded, and it'll tell you it's going to be downloading you know, just a few things here. It's going to need to get the ball rolling. And it's going to get all those updates down. Now what will take a little bit of time to get done is after it is up got everything installed that it needs it's actually going to create an encryption key that you'll want to have but you'll see as it goes along it's it's really not uh, not that big of a deal but this is something that's good to know how to do so that when you are running into a problem like I did recently with a uh, certain vendors two-factor authentication system and trying to eliminate where the problem was I ended up bringing my Raspberry Pi into the lab and set it up and found out it wasn't the vendor's two-factor authentication system that was the problem it actually had found a bug within the particular hardware vendors product and as you can see now it's going through and getting everything ready to do the installation and this is one of the things that I've learned to love about the Raspberry Pi. It really gets away from some of the stigma that I had first seen when I started using Linux, where it's you had to get all these pieces, parts in the right order. And this is why with all these demos, I have just stayed with using uh, Raspbian because it simply works. And you know, it's everybody's going to have their own preference. And it's much like what I'm going to show you in setting up Free Radius, doing... Uh, clear text passwords, I would never roll that kind of thing out in production unless there just wasn't any other choice. And there are going to be other ways, things you can do and set up, and I'll be showing that in succeeding videos as I go through the process of getting it all set up. Now, don't be too worried about this one warning you see where var run free radius doesn't exist. It's simply going to create everything it needs. Now, this is the part I was talking about earlier where it will go through and it's generating its own uh, DH, or if you're not familiar with that from an encryption standpoint, it's Diffie-Hellman. Uh, so that's, you know, it takes a little bit of time to generate, but nothing that uh, should become a showstopper. And we'll take just a moment here. Okay, now it's finished generating the key, and it's actually getting free radius to uh, get it up and running. So it's going to be ready for the next step that we're going to have. And it's great. We're now back to the command prompt. So the first thing we'll want to do is set up a username to start with. So we'll do sudo nano uh, forward slash etc forward slash free radius forward slash users. And you'll see it's already got a, a pre-populated file. And this has been very well documented. So we'll just kind of cut to the chase with what we're going to do here. 
and we'll create a user. In this case, because most of the gear I work with is Cisco, we'll just call it Cisco. And then we'll spacebar over here and we will do clear text dash text, not test, password space colon equal sign space and in double quotes put Cisco one two three close quote. And we'll do a control X. Yes. Enter. Now, anytime you make a change in free radius, you're going to need to stop and start it. Now, you will see that there is a restart command. I've never had good luck with getting that to work. So we'll just do a sudo space service space free radius dot stop or space stop. All right, then we'll do sudo service free radius start. Okay. Now, at this point, we've got it ready to test. There is a built-in uh, test program that comes with it. It's rad test space Cisco, which is the username that we've just created, Cisco 123 space, and we'll give it the loopback address. And you'll see more about this later, space, and the port number, we'll just tell it zero. And then this is something we hadn't discovered before. In Radius, there is always a pre-shared key that's used to verify that this person, not the person, but the device is actually allowed to do authentication. So we, we you probably will want to set one up differently, but this is going to work. And actually, it's testing one, two, three. So I'll press enter. Now, this is a very good built in diagnostic that gives you a quick go, no go indication of what's going on. So there's the username, there's the password, and this part really doesn't mean a whole lot at this point. This is the magic part of the process right here. You want to see access except that says the user has successfully authenticated. And we'll prove that point of how the other packet will look if we just change the password slightly. And it says reject. So reject is usually an indication that there is a problem of some type. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually set up in radius the devices that are allowed to authenticate now you can create a global rule that will say everything's allowed to come in as long as they know the pre-shared key generally what I found is depending on sometimes political uh, situations within a company each group whose equipment is authenticating to radius may use a different pre-shared key that that group is going to know now, obviously with you being the administrator on this you're going to have to know it, but at least there's some distinction on what boxes can authenticate. So we'll go ahead and proceed to the next part, and that's sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash free radius forward slash clients dot conf. Okay, again, this is another pre built file. And it's very well documented. You can see some of the different options you want to look at. Now, here was where I was talking about earlier, where you've got the, the loop back already built in, and there's options it's going to discuss as it goes along. And you can even make a specific radius authentication rule for an individual device just by using the net mask of, of 32. And then there's the, the default uh, secret that we were talking about. I said passphrase earlier, but secret passphrase... It's two ways, at least for me, I refer to the same thing. I'm sure some folks may uh, differ with that a little bit. Now, we'll get down here past, and then we can get started. Now, you'll notice I wanted to make sure I got past that squiggle bracket right there, and that's very important because when we go to set up access, we'll start out with, in my case, client, and the subnet that I'm on in the lab is 192.168.15.0 forward slash 24 space and then the open tilde or squiggle bracket whatever you want to call it and then we will go through and then type secret and just to keep things simple I follow the spacing convention and everything that has been lined out in the sample document so what I will do is uh, we'll just do testing uh, or test one, two, three, uh, you know, again, you know, you'll want to do something a little bit different. 
And the short name is something that I haven't seen a lot of use for yet, but again, with just to make things a little descriptive and we'll, we'll get into it with some of the setup is, well, just, it helps kind of label things out a little bit. So I'll just call this lab network. Now we'll then do a close wiggle bracket and I'll just put an empty line there to keep things spaced out a little bit. We'll do our control X, Y, enter. Now, just like we did before, we'll do sudo space service space free radius. If I can spell radius. Stop. And we'll just do an up arrow. And we'll tell it to start. Now, at this point, the change is ready to go. And if you get an error when it tries to start up, that's usually an indication that you don't have your closing squiggle or open squiggle brackets in proper place. So it, it's got a way of telling you. It just doesn't say go down and check a certain line number. Now, something else we want to do, one of the other things that you will want to look at, especially when debugging a radius problem, is looking at the radius log. And with the way that free radius sets up the log, we'll have to use the sudo command to be able to see it. So we'll do sudo space tail space forward slash var log free radius radius dot log. Okay, now there's the log that it keeps and you can see, you know, reasonable description of going on. Now, there's a couple of things you want to think about changing because this is one of the challenges I first ran into when setting up radius. It, it, I was authenticating users and some were passing, some were failing. I went to the log and I was getting nothing. So one of the next things we'll want to do is do sudo space nano etc free radius radius d dot comp. Now we're getting the actual configuration file for radius. And what we want to go down here and look for, and it's a little bit down in the file, but nothing of, of you know, any big concern, is we want to look for the log section. This is what's going to let us be able to record what's going on. A little bit more to go here. And we should see it just a little bit. I'm trying not to move too fast so that I don't miss it. And there's listen, so we're getting close. Okay, and here's log. Okay, now this is where we got to start being careful and slow down just a little bit. There are several things you can change in this area, and what I have found is we will tell it we want to do auth equals yes, and so that's that it will record the authentication attempts. And for right now, I'm going to activate just the auth bad pass so that when somebody is having problems logging in, that we'll see what password they're using if they were using the wrong password. In you know you for depending on the level of documentation your auditors may want you to have, then you may want to do auth good pass, but then you know you're exposing passwords that you may not need to to know. Okay, so do control X, Y, enter. Okay, and we will go through and do a stop of free radius, and we'll do a start. Okay, now no errors in startup. That's good. So we'll scroll back up here where we did the test and we'll let it run okay we've got the message that it thinks everything went right and there you see there's the there's the line in the file right there where you see that yes they did pass now it doesn't show you the password now we'll go through here and we'll just use the same thing again, except we'll just add a four like we did the last time. And it says access reject. Okay, we'll go back to the file. Now see at this point, it shows you right after the username what password they use. So if they say they're using the right password, then you can see very quickly. Well, that brings us to the end of what I've got planned for this time.
I'll be working on some other things. So the next video will show what it's like to authenticate either against a Cisco and or possibly a Juniper device. And then we'll get into the different kinds of uh, things that you can look at within Radius to be able to use it as well as providing the protection you need to on the network. And this brings us to the end of another podcast. Appreciate everyone's time and watching this as well as reading the accompanying post that's on my website to see the other videos I've done in the Raspberry Pi and other series and the articles that I've done with them please visit my website at www.ronnutter.com if you have any questions or have any requests you'd like me to look at in a future video you can contact me uh, uh, via the uh, contact me button on the website and I'll be glad to do what I can for you thank you again for your time